team deathmatch. Let's do this. If you've ever played Modern Warfare 2 and you wanted an ACR because of it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is a little bit tame, so get in there and make YouTube regret their decision to get me on the platform. Guys, this video is sponsored by Simply Safe. A big thank you to them. We'll talk about them later. But the biggest supporter of the channel is Brownells. Brownells is a huge 2A supporter and is the hero that we both need and deserve. They are bringing ancient guns back from the grave as well as having a huge selection of different products. Definitely go and check them out and give them a big thank you. We, of course, have Mira Safety and uh, for their gas masks and all that kind of stuff and goat guns. If you want to build a little toy gun for the kids or if you want to collect them. Goat Guns is a good option. Ladies and gentlemen, my most often forgotten, but most certainly not by me, F-15 Eagles. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very cool rifle. We have the Bushmaster ACR, formerly the Magpul Masada. Holy shit, there's a lot that goes into this weapon. So before we get into it, we're going to do what we always do. We're going to do full disclosure. Full disclosure is important because it discloses what my relationship is with these companies prior to doing a review. So... Bushmaster makes this particular ACR. I have no relationship with Bushmaster, so no problems there. Uh, Remington makes the military version. Uh, no relationship with Remington. And finally, Magpul originally designed the Masada, which became the ACR. I have no relationship with Magpul. In fact, I don't even know if they know who I am. So we have that as far as the full disclosures um, on this particular weapon. Now, this weapon was not provided for by anyone except for a dear friend who loaned it to me for this video and I have completely destroyed it. I am sorry so much, Kelly. But in any case, we have the ACR. Um, I only got to do around 800 rounds on this. Um, again, I have to budget my ammo right now, so I'm sorry we couldn't do more. But I have some pretty good impressions based off of that and I feel like I can go do a pretty good review for you. So, without further ado, Let's get into this review. Let's go tip to butt, just like the Navy likes. I know you Navy guys out there are pumping your fists right now. So, getting into it. The thing you have to realize about the Magpul uh, Masada and the Bushmaster ACR is we have to take ourselves back in time. 2007, 2008, you have to realize that the M4, the M4A1 was having a lot of pro uh, problems in the military. The sandy, dusty environments that they were being employed in were proven to be pretty problematic for the weapon. Um, at that time, you know, the... Different magazines hadn't really filtered in at that point. The M4A1 upgrade was coming, and there were some QC issues that were going on. So enter the Magpul Masada, which promised to fix literally everything. Uh, and of course, that was later sold to Bushmaster and Remington, uh, otherwise known as Freedom Group, a great abomination of our time in around 2010. And we got this weapon shortly after. So the Magpul Masada promised to be a reliable, a robust system, and a very modular system, one where the barrel and caliber could be easily swapped, where anything could be swapped to the user's preference, and we'd have a wonderful, wonderful military rifle or civilian rifle, and even better, Magpul said this thing would cost about $1,500. Perfect. Precisely what the market needed at the time. However, when Bushmaster delivered, we had a weapon more close to about 26 100-ish, maybe a little bit more, and none of the aftermarket support that we saw. So the Bushmaster ACR never really took off, and it took quite a, t a lot of time for both Bushmaster to uh, release some fixes for the weapon, as well as for that aftermarket support to really catch up. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk a little bit about this and figure out what precisely went wrong, what went right, and what I kind of like and don't like about this rifle, and, uh, Without further ado, let's do this. Let's go. So starting all the way at the tip right here, we have the AAC 51T. It is a three-pronged flash hider and is a good suppressor host. And honestly, as far as a muzzle device goes for a rifle straight out of the factory, the AAC 51T is awesome. It is a great flash hider. It is a 
good at keeping the weapon on target, simply directing those gases forward. That, mean that, re that means that that recoil comes straight back in your shoulder. And it is a great muzzle device, and it was um, a lot better than what you typically saw on a lot of rifles that were being released at the time. So good on Bushmaster and having that muzzle device be the one that came out with this rifle. That was awesome. Now, here comes the first big slap in the face that consumers got when the ACR is first released. First off, on this particular weapon, this is a 10 and a half inch barrel. I guess they're a little bit rare, but the Bushmaster came in 16 inch barrel lengths and there was nothing else that was really released at that time. So you pretty much got a extremely modular weapon with none of the modularity, but a couple of good things about the barrels. The barrels were cold hammer forge, which is excellent for longevity and service life. However, when the first barrel was released, it was released with a one nine twist that was somewhat puzzling to a lot of people at the time because typically as of that time the 109 twist was considered to be kind of a a more budget feature on rifles most people wanted to have that one in seven so that they could shoot and get good stabilization on some excellent rounds like the mark 262 those 77 grain otms from black hills but they came out with the one in nine and so with the 2600 dollar price point a one in nine twist 16 inch barrel with no other barrels really available that was kind of the death nail of the gun in my opinion but later on that twist rate was changed to one in seven and we had shorter barrel lengths released such as this 10.5 that goes in the ACR. And I think the ACR really shines as an SBR type weapon. So it was a little too late, you know, it was too little too late by the time it was released, but that's what we have for barrels. Now I will say that the barrels are very, very accurate. Now I would say that because there's not a whole lot of aftermarket support, perhaps this system wasn't developed um, as much as it could have been. Because as we know, AR-15s now are incredibly, incredibly accurate weapons. Regularly, uh, manufacturers can put out sub-MOA weapons. With ACR, it sits at about an MOA with the current barrel that we have on it. I truly do believe that if the, this weapon had been more widely adopted, we'd probably have different profiles of barrels and different accessories that would make this weapon a sub-MOA weapon. But as it stands, it is an MOA weapon with 77 grain OTMs and a couple other different types of ammunition, and it does excellent. So it is a very, very accurate, accurate barrel. Now, the best part about the ACR is how easy it is to swap out the barrel. So what we're gonna do right here is I'm gonna show you how easy it is to swap it out and the gas system also comes with it. So to swap out the barrel, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the pin that keeps the handguard in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that bad boy out. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna lock that charging handle back and we're simply going to pull that guy off. Of course, I have a weapon light with this little tether right there from the pressure pad. So we put, take that handguard right there, put that off to the side and you can see it's very interesting. We have our barrel right here and the gas system and we have this little tool right here. And with a simple twist, we can get this thing out. So we're gonna depress it, push it to counterclockwise and then we can simply get our barrel out at that point. So depending on how new your gun is, it's gonna be a little more difficult to get out. I've popped this thing out quite a few times. So we have the barrel and gas system and then if we wanted to put in a different caliber, um, a different barrel length, quite easy. With a different caliber, of course, depending on the caliber type, you're probably gonna need a different bolt head. But in the case of us just slamming a old 5.56 back in there, it's no problem. Now we're gonna put it back in, and all we're going to do is depress, and we can simply rotate this over, and you hear it ratchet into place, nice and secure. Go ahead and put our handguard back on. Line that up, push the pin through, take a little pressure pad, put it back in place. I feel like I'm Mr. Rogers right now. And we have our weapon put back together and it is now good to go. Pretty cool. Um, there are a few weapons out there that have as easy a process. I think perhaps one of the weapons that comes to mind is the Robinson Arms XCR, which is perhaps a better system for a couple reasons. But as far as not having to use any tools, um, this is pretty freaking good. The problem was, was, of course, when you got this, there were there was nothing else to put on it. So it was kind of useless, but great idea. <laughs> it's props with the ACR. Now, and that brings us to our gas system. Now, the gas system is very, very consistent and very reliable, and that's because it is based very heavily upon the AR-18 slash AR-180, which is a much copied and a very reliable, very proven system. So there's absolutely no problem with them using it. And in fact, it worked very much so to their benefit in making a very reliable system and for a very smooth system. Now this weapon's been shot 800 times. Um, there has been no cleaning done and you can still 
hear how smooth that weapon cycles. And indeed, with the short stroke gas piston system and the buffers that they have in here, and I'll show it to you right now, um, it is a very remarkably smooth system to shoot. So you can see we have the recoil swing right in there, and it is just incredibly smooth, reliable system. <laughs> very smooth, and it just feels good. And you know, the thing that really surprised me the most about the ACR was the first time I shot it was how smooth it felt to shoot, uh, especially compared to even weapons nowadays like the SIG MCX and other weapons that use very similar operating principles. And indeed, in many ways, this outclassed them. Um, this felt way better than the MCX. It felt way better than the um, G36 to me, all of which are platforms that are based on the AR-18 type system. So I was very impressed with the engineering that went into this. Funny enough, Bushmaster did, and Remington as well, the Freedom Group uh, whole thing, did get some things right when they designed this, and the gas system is absolutely a large part of that. And you also have to remember that although it's gonna recoil a little bit more significantly than something like an AR with a DI system, this is still a light recoiling platform, and with the short stroke gas system, we have a very reliable system, because you remember that when this was designed, it was meant to be as reliable a system as, as possible in adverse conditions. And they did a couple more things beyond that. If we look at the bolt and the lower, there's quite a bit of a gap between there. In fact, as I rotate it, you might be able to see through and see that little gap right there. And the whole idea was, although it is a larger weapon, especially compared to some of the other weapons out there that are you know, currently on the market, or even back then, there's a lot of space around all of the components in the weapon. This allows for dirt and grime to fall out, hopefully, and not jam up the system. Now, there are a couple different philosophies when it comes to keeping a weapon from getting jammed up from gook and mud. But all that being said, I think this, this is a, I believe that this is a really well-designed system. So I quite like what they did with it. Good on you guys. Um, God, it's, it is actually a, a pretty cool rifle. So going from the gas system, we have to talk a little bit about the charging handle. So the charging handle can be swapped from either the left side or to the right side. And the best part about the charging handle is that it is non-reciprocating. This is huge. Um, not only is it non-reciprocating, which means every time I fire the weapon, the charging handle does not move, it stays in place, which makes it easier to grab the weapon wherever I want, whether it be behind or in front, it doesn't matter, it's not gonna reciprocate, much unlike a scar, which will destroy your hand if you try to put that guy behind the bolt. But even better than that is, if the weapon doesn't go all the way into battery, this can also act as a forward assist, you can hit it and it will push the bolt into battery. So. Just a, in my opinion, a very well thought out system. They did a lot of really good things there. And if, another part point that I really like about this is it's very FAL-like in its adjustment. Now, the FAL had a lot of very fine adjustments. You could do a lot. And this is a little bit simpler than this, but with this particular system, at the very top there, we have this U, it means unsuppressed. Now, if you rotate that around, it goes to S, which stands for suppressed. That is how easy it is to change the system. And what's even better is I haven't found that the system has gotten gunked up. So with the 800 or so rounds that I fired, this thing hasn't slowed down or been hard to rotate. That's not always the case. Some weapons, when you try to rotate these adjustments, can really become carbon baked to the point where they're, now, they're no longer rotating. So they did a really good job there. And if, even if it does get carbon baked, we have a little hole right there and you can use that to kind of uh, leverage this with some type of tool or something like that. But again, a lot of really well thought out design principles were put into this particular rifle. And that brings us to the handguard. So the handguard, there are multiple different handguards out there. This is the Picatinny system. Now you have to realize that the aftermarket has been supporting the Bushmaster ACR ever since its release. So we do now have better systems out there. We have better handguards, we have better lowers, we have better everything. They have really come through on that. But in the case of this, we're you know, kind of reviewing what we got from the factory. So we have a Picatinny system. Um, when I first saw it, I was like, there is no way I'm gonna be able to you know, grasp onto this thing uh, comfortably at all. It looks larger than an HK416 quad rail, which is quite large. But what's funny, as I point this weapon right at you guys, is it's very oblong. So it's actually quite comfortable, and I actually like it quite a bit. Now, there are a couple issues with it. You have one singular pin holding that thing in place, and because of that, it's not the best if you want to have something that is going to retain zero to be held onto that rail. So you're probably not going to want to put a peck or anything like that that needs to have a zero. But as far as a light, that's fine. You're going to want to put your peck on the top rail, which will hold zero. That's a quick note for you guys. Going down to the system, 
you can notice that it was fairly forward thinking in that they use pretty liberal use of polymers on this weapon. You have to realize that the Glock was important, was pretty popular at the time. They figured they could reduce weight, increase strength by the use of polymers on their lower. Now, again, the cool thing about the lower is it's very AR-15 like, but in many ways, I believe that it is actually improved. So once again, showing it to you, but the upper and the lower do separate much like an AR-15. They pop right off. So we have our lower right here. And again, the thing that you can look at is we have an AR-15 fire control group. The safety is very AR-15 like, and there's a lot of really good things going on there. Another thing to notice is it is completely ambidextrous. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's talk about it a little bit here. Talk about what makes this so good. So first off, magazine well is beveled, easy insertion, which is always important. And of course, the magazine release is very positive and it is for both sides, so it's easy to use. Another thing that's really cool about it, and I think perhaps the coolest feature, is the bolt release. The bolt release reminds me of the bad lever and the G36 at the same time. So it's right down there in the trigger guard works either way. So if you push up on it, you can lock your bolt back. Then again, if you push down on it, you drop that bolt. Again, it is very easy to manipulate, especially when compared to an AR-15. So honestly, I do believe that the controls on the Bushmaster ACR are a marked improvement over the ergonomics on the AR-15 itself. I think that a lot can be learned from the way that they designed this particular system. I really enjoy what they have done with it. And, you know, not to get off track, but I could see how, you know, if you were at a trade show in 2007, 2008, and you're looking at this gun, you're holding it, and they're like, hey, this is gonna be probably the next infantry rifle for the United States military. You could look at this and be like, yeah, this is a good, well thought out system. The controls are improved. It is a market improvement over the M4 A1 in certain ways. I could definitely see how this could have been adopted. It's a, it's a well thought out design, I think is a point. And I believe had it been adopted that certain improvements would have been made. So in fact, Remington did make some of those improvements. So they did remove that kind of that quick change barrel process. And that actually thinned out this bottom area quite a bit. Uh, and because of that, you had a smaller rail, which is a little bit ergonomic. I think that was a very good choice. But yeah, you know, the ACR, I think, could have been really close had things gone a little bit differently. So it, it's in many ways, it's kind of a tragedy that this weapon didn't take off more than it than it really did. Now, when it comes to the trigger, cool thing about the trigger, of course, multiple different triggers for it. But Geisley makes a really awesome trigger for this particular kit. So without further ado, we don't have the Geisley trigger in there. We have the stock trigger, but... So we always do and we're gonna go set trigger together. So put your finger right over mine, feeling that trigger. So you have no take up. There we go. We have our first stage, hit our wall, a little more creep, we have our let off. Okay, feels okay. From the reset, let forward, let forward, let's off. About a five pound pull from there. About eight pounds total. Uh, five pounds after the second stage. It is a good military trigger. It's not particularly fast, but with of course it feels like an okay AR-15 trigger. With a Geisley trigger in there, you're gonna have a much better system. And uh, yeah, it's a good trigger. <laughs> Nothing feels wrong with it. Now, when it comes to the grip here, that's where a lot of people had issues with the ACR was you couldn't change the grip at all. It was just into the polymer. If you wanted to change it, you probably have to change the lower. You know, and that has been corrected in future versions. And people have made lowers that allow you to put whatever pistol grip you want on there. But the pistol grip does feel good. The trigger guard is well designed. And I really don't have a whole lot of problem with it. Now, the only issue that I really have with the ACR is the safety placement. So with holding this thing in like a modern stance where you have, you know, you're squared up to the target and that type of thing, at times it can be a little bit difficult to reach onto the safety very quickly. That can be easily... Uh, corrected with a longer lever. So I'm not really not gonna hit that too hard other than to say that, you know, straight out of the factory, I think that the safety leads a little bit to be desired. It's not quite as positive or as sturdy as an AR-15 safety is, but other than that, quite good. Now, speaking of safeties, it's gonna be important that you keep your weapon safe. Guys, this video is sponsored by Simply Safe. So we're gonna say a little message for our sponsors here and to thank them, thank them for their support. And specifically talk a little bit more about why I like Simply Safe. So Growing up as a college student, didn't have a whole lot of money. And the great thing about Simply Safe is you can add 
that security as you need it, as you're able to afford it or beef it up in areas that you need to. So rather than having an expensive installation all at once, I can add uh, you know, rings of security as I need them. For, so for example, in the room that I have my firearms in, I can add extra glass break sensors for the windows, or I can add more video monitoring devices or entry sensors on the doorway. All that stuff makes for a very comprehensive system. And I like it quite a bit. Um, it's well designed, well thought out. I really do like it quite a bit. It has everything that you could possibly need for home security and all that kind of good stuff. So definitely check out Simply Safe. Can't thank them enough for sponsoring this channel. Give them a big thank you and go check out their website. So with that being said, guys, let's get back into this rifle right here and talk about perhaps the most used feature on the Bushmaster ACR. The thing on the ACR that has endured the most is the stock. The stock is without a doubt something that has become extremely popular. The stock is well thought out, it's well built, and it's just plain good. And you can see them on a whole lot of different rifles nowadays. You see them for scars, you see them for MP5s, for everything. And it is just a good design. It's easy to adjust. They can go out, you have your QD points, you have your points for sling attachment. If you need to, you can raise up the comb piece to get a little bit higher in your optic. It is just well designed, well thought out, and I like it quite a bit. So. The stock is something that has endured and absolutely on the ACR, it feels wonderful. And here's where I get a little bit nitpicky. Uh, one thing that I really don't like about the ACR is all the QD points. Um, it becomes a little bit redundant and unnecessary and perhaps adds more weight than is necessary. And beyond that, they're also not anti-rotation, which means when I have them plugged in, uh, my QD slings can simply spin around freely. Not what you really want. I'm a little bit curious as far as that design feature and perhaps are looking at it with a you know more modern kind of look at things, but it's something I really don't like when it comes to the ACR. Now you do have quite a few points. We have them at the front of the Picatinny handguard, at the rear right here, on the opposite side. So we have four up there. We of course have another point for a hook or perhaps to loop your sling through. And then of course we have a reversible QD mount on the back of the stock as well as another point to loop your sling through. So as far as options for mounting your sling, you've got plenty. But uh, I think this is something that in future versions, should they choose to remake these, they should remove those and make it a little bit more streamlined and add allow people to add in those QD points wherever they need, rather than building so many into the system. And the kind of that brings us to the end, you know? What does it feel like to shoot? It's an incredible weapon. I, I was super surprised at how smoothly it cycled, at how reliable it was. And again, we will do a reliability test in the future, but it's a well thought out rifle. Um, it's a good rifle. It just came out at not a great time. It came out in 2010 at a time when AR-15s were becoming super cheap. And this thing was not. And also came out at a time when you can buy so many different uppers and then suddenly you had no options for mounting other types of barrels to this when it first came out and those caliber conversion kits just kind of ended up evaporating so you really didn't have any aftermarket support to speak of you had a fairly expensive rifle and it just kind of fizzled which is super super unfortunate and i blame freedom group for that so it's very unfortunate i think that holding this now and shooting this now and looking back um you know in history and looking at the way how it compares to modern rifles i think that this is a still a good rifle. It's still a well thought out rifle. And now as long as QC stands, it would be excellent. It's very well made. And it just sucks that it never really took off. Because when I look at this thing, I think Modern Warfare 2, I think of all these cool games that had the ACR and it kind of in many ways takes me back to, you know, early college days when I was playing Modern Warfare 2 and all that kind of stuff. And man, I just feel a little bit nostalgic holding it. I feel like I'm in the video game. But I mean, the thing about it is that as cool as this gun is and as well as it works and as cool as it's going to make you look when you're shooting it, if you don't have training, it's not going to matter. So if you can get your hands on this gun, get it, shoot it. It's a piece of history. But ultimately, just because you have it, you're not going to be good with a firearm. Make sure you get training, guys. Tons of great places to get training from. Haley Strategic, Bear Solutions, Pat McNamara, uh, so many different guys out there with experience and willing to teach you. I'd highly recommend them. And just train. You know, your mind is, t is the ultimate weapon. The tool is a rifle. Uh, any tool should be deadly in your hands should you be trained enough. So make sure that you sharpen the mind. It is what will get you through the thick and thin of things. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you guys. 
I have nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys, relax. So a, a lot of people have a really hard time relaxing. They don't give themselves time. If they fail in some way, they immediately go back to work and they never allow themselves to take a pause and to breathe. It's important. Life will end at some point and it's important that you take those moments to appreciate what's around you and to slow down. Make sure you take those moments. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you've gotten this far, a big shout out to my Patreon supporters. Get in there, support the Patreon. It makes this channel amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I've got nothing else for you.